Jules, what was your first day out of prison like? Talk My to us. first day out of prison yeah. was the day I actually stepped out of the prison. Yeah. Um, great. Well, it was a car journey with my sister and my mum and dad and we just played music that I've missed and loved and that me and my sister loved. So that was just nice. It was like taking me back home. And then I spent the day, I think it was the day and night just at home with everything homely and my family. And yeah, it was it was amazing. That's all I wanted. AK, tell me yours. Um, well, so one of my good friends came and picked me up. We had a nice, nice, like, journey back to London because obviously I was outside of London. Um, and then he's like, bro, let's go get you a tracksuit and some trainers. Throw that stuff away. Very but, like, different to my story right yeah, now. <laughs> different. He's like, yeah, let's go. So quickly went to, like, get a tracksuit and some trainers. Yeah. And then he's like... Regular Yeah, he's like, get a haircut. Let's get a haircut. Boom. And then I'm taking you home to your mum. Because oh. I think she got some food and all that. So boom. What a good day. Haircut, boom. At home. I was just at home eating food. Family. A couple of my friends came round. And that was me. Yeah. Nice, chilled, quiet time. Oh, yeah. And probation. On the same day. Had to go probation. Oh, I think I did yeah. as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think probation skip was the first step. Skip past that bit. <laughs> yeah. Skip all of that. And that was nice. That's not bad. Yeah. Good day, innit? Thanks for sharing that. Nah, you're welcome. Hi, I'm Jules. And I'm Zach. And welcome back to Life After Prison, The Sit Down. In this series, we talk to inspirational people about their journey of life after prison. And in today's episode, our guest is the founder of Hackneywick FC, the founder of Big Ego Media, and the winner of the Pride of Sport Award 2018, none other than Bobby Kasanga. Hey, then, guys. Hello. Yes. <laughs> How's it going, my brother? Not too bad, not too bad. Thanks good, for having good. me. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate yeah, thank you. you. Um, we're going to get straight into it, yeah? Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, I've watched Big Eagle Media. I've seen a bit of your story. And I know about you being recruited as a Peckham boy. Yeah. Uh, and you got into gangs. But what was like? What was life like before that? Life was bliss, you know? Like, football was my passion. That's what I wanted to do. I lived football. Match of the day is me. Sunday mornings, I'm at football. So, very kind of innocent and just wanting to be the best footballer in the world. I remember I used to take my younger brother, I used to play for Athenley at the time. It was a team kind of based in um, Peckham Rye. And um, yeah, I supported Blackburn. That's another, that's another what? story. Yeah, yeah. What? Whoa, Blackburn. Uh, yeah, I, I still support them now, but yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah, How? Yeah. How? Sorry, I've got it, to ask that. It, it was the era of the SAS, Saturn and Shearer. Okay, cool. We won the league the following yeah, year yeah. and that as well, because my brother went, my brother support United. You know, you want to follow your older brother. He's like, yeah. oh, you can't support the same team as okay. me. So I'm like, okay. Team that was second was Blackman. I said, okay, I'll support Blackman then. Wow. Then I stuck with it ever since. But yeah, uh, life was fun, man. Um, playing outside, I didn't see the dangers. But I remember also my brother used to come back home and tell me these stories of these so called Peckham boys. And, and I remember be, being excited about these names who'd be calling out and so mm. on. So yeah. So you're playing football and whatnot. And then it's like you got the allure of yeah. the streets kind of thing. So did you feel like you had to choose between the roads and football? Um, not really at the beginning because I would still go to, to training at the beginning and but like I said you guys maybe seen the story of how I got recruited as a Peckham boy how it literally happened and from then you feel the excitement hanging around with these guys and you haven't got money so everyone, everyone's going to go and do robberies at, f- at first I was against it like oh guys and I was with the one, oh don't bring him man he's always complaining he's always moaning and in the end peer pressure takes over you see everyone come back with their phones sell it Go and buy a train is going, and you feel like no, I'll get involved. And like I said, the first time I robbed someone, it was it was so unlike me. I had no confidence. I done it. You can tell I was a kind of a pretender kind of thing. So, but eventually you get comfortable with it. You start trying to not make it a part of who you are. Just an action, or it's a need. And then yeah, football became less of a, a thing for me. So I'd rather hang around with a man than doing nothing on the streets. Just yeah. Is that how? So is that how you got into like the gang life then? Yeah, I mean yeah. Um, one guy um, tried to rob my hat, but my brother at the time was very prominent in Peckham. Mm. And someone said, what are you doing? That's um, Carly's little brother. He's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know, man. You're one of us. And literally, that was my recruitment. The next day when I'm walking past, they called me over. Yo, cool. Come and hang out. And then literally, I was with them every single day. And it was literally via that. And then you start following the activities everyone's doing. So 
barreling mopeds, things like that, going up to Chocadero doing robberies and just lots of antisocial behaviours. And then as you get older, the need for money increases and then you start getting involved in drug dealing and so on. Mm. So with at this stage and what you're doing, um, did you ever think that you would go to prison or be no, facing a sentence? I never thought I'd go to prison. The reason being I was in a top set at school. I remember we used to call people failures who went, went to prison. So I wouldn't even see the consequences of the things I was doing. I didn't think I'll get caught or anything like that. So I just knew, yeah, I'm the top set at school. I'm going to become a footballer. I'm going to make it as a footballer anyway. Wow. So um, I had no idea at all that I would end up in prison. None whatsoever. So go Sorry, on. no, because I just wanted to touch on that. So you're a smart guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're a bit similar in that respect that we was, did you like school? Yeah, I enjoyed school. Yeah, so we're a bit similar like that because I enjoyed school as well. But so then when you're in prison now or you get there, do you have feel like you've got a, like, do you, do you, are you comfortable explaining that to guys? Like, look, like, yeah, man's in here, mm. but that's not man's life or that's not. Do you know, you it's even, even in this, in this day of life now, people always look at me like, swear down you went to prison. Swear down you was involved in gangs and whatnot. But I'm like, I can be a chameleon. Right? I know how to switch up. Like right now, for example, I'll go to a board meeting of a big corporate company. I'll know how to articulate myself. Mm. When everyone knows, yo, man, then what's going on? What, what are we doing? So you, you, you should know how to change it. So for me, on. yeah, going to prison, I was a tall lad. I was a big lad. So you're not going to have the best of me trying to fight me kind of thing. But also I was quite intelligent. So I was able to kind of maneuver myself in the, and get sort of take advantage of those kind of situations. So where I, I started um, doing my degree, in there, people are like, we, we studied in university in here. I'm like, I'm like yeah, <laughs> why not? So that kind of opened up other people's eyes. And then shout out my guy, P, um, Piggy, um, who was within H&P ISIS. Yeah, yeah. He's the one who started writing a book. And when he started writing a book, he showed it to me. I'm like, yo, actually, I'm going to do this as well. And, and that what kind of birthed everything else I was doing in terms of writing wow. and that as well. So yeah, but I always encourage people, do more than just chilling in someone's cell playing PlayStation. Okay, so you touched on your book, yeah. which we're, I'm going to come back to in a minute. But yeah. first of all, before like before we go into that, just when, because I want to understand. So when you're in your gangs mm. and you're doing all of that, do you had you, you didn't even think about consequences about even going into prison. You thought you knew that prison. Did you think prison could be an, could be on the cards, or I mean, that wasn't even? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you you see people get arrested, right? Yeah. But the way we kind of had is like, oh no, the, the way we're gonna get away, we're never gonna get arrested. And I just, I knew it wasn't long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I knew crime wasn't long term. I knew right. it wasn't me. I didn't feel comfortable so that, in crime. That wasn't the link. So because yeah. you didn't want to do that long term, yeah. you weren't going to yeah. do that. Yeah. So it wasn't. I wasn't comfortable doing crime. I just felt it was a necessity as I saw everyone else doing it. And I thought, yeah. okay, I need these things as well. But that's what that's what a lot of these young people go through now, mm. through peer pressure. They ain't got the right pair of trainers. Everyone's mm. laughing at them. Okay, cool. I need to go and do this because I'm only 14, 15. How else am I going to make money? Mm. I need to go and rob someone. My mom can't afford to give me the pocket money. So it's about what I try to teach these young people now. It's about being patient. What you think you yeah. need right now. You, you don't, don't have an abundance later so, on. Yeah. So <laughs> when you actually heard that you were facing prison, yeah. um, how did that feel? And how long did you get? What? Oh, I cried, man. I cried, I cried. I never cried before. Is it? I remember because um, we robbed um, £27,000 from Rains Park train station and I thought I'd got away and I was hiding in the shed for ages. And then obviously armed feds come and then the, uh, the dog sniffed me out where I was. I tried to run inside of a house. Then they, they beat me up. They really beat like I'm, I'm even scarred for life there. So if you see there, I got scars yeah, there. The yeah. dog was chewing off my arm, basically. Wow. Um, at that point, I knew, oh, I meant, but even then I was thinking, I need to get out of this. <laughs> I always think I can get, get out of things. I think I need to get out of this. And then um, what happened was the next day, gone to court. My Cody's been, um, my Cody was um, given bail. Okay. And they told me, nah, you're not getting bail. I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean I'm not getting bail? Because you tried to cut in it. Yes, then that, but he, he tried to cut as well. Okay, that's But weird. I think he was younger than me. Okay. And I think he was back to city GCSEs and stuff like that. And then they're like, yeah, nah, you're, 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 you're going in. So how old were you at the time then? I was 20. I was okay. 20 and he was 16. Okay. So to, both of my co-ODs were 16. So what we used to do back in the day was that like, I'll be the driver kind of thing. I used to get the younger lot to go grab the box, bring it back, I open it up. So you went cash and transit, yeah? Catching transit Same as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then um, we'll open it up and then give them their cut and that was it. And then, yeah, um, 
the uh, magistrate said, yeah, we're reminding you. I was like, what? <laughs> Which we reminded? Like, yeah, you reminded. I remember crying. I was in tears. On, oh, they put man. me on the bus. And then I stopped crying when I heard one of my friends was also on the bus. He's like, yo, yeah. is that you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, what are you saying? What are you saying? Kind of thing. But as soon as I got to Feltham, though. You know, it's quite settling on that bus sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. As soon as I got to Feltham, though, it felt comfortable because I saw everyone that I knew in there. And then I just oh, built, built okay. up from there. So, yeah. That's quite... It's like a bit more of a home feel yeah. than that mm. mad kind of feeling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. No, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Do you tell people that then? Do you tell them like, you know, I cried? Yeah. If you see, if you see my interviews, they need all the big e, e or interview I do with people going to prison. I always say, tell them guys, I've admitted that I cried when I went to jail. Do you, did, did you cry? Some like, no, I didn't cry. I was like, you know what? I can't lie, I did cry. So I always, I always make it a theme of asking that question in my interviews as well. Mm, so yeah. No, but yeah, that. yeah that's, a, that's, a, that's a... I think some, it's good to show the reality. Yeah, to, well. to share that with people yeah. as yeah. well, because, yeah. you know... It gets that, emotional in there. Yeah. And also, this is real emotions, you know? And no, being definitely. able to express that and say that is massive. So thank you. Yeah. So Bobby, you, you touched on earlier about you writing um, your books and getting a degree. I wanted to touch on that. I wanted to ask how... You got into that. What motivated you to achieve those things? I mean, I was always in top set in school. So I always knew that education is something that was important that I wanted to kind of fulfill. And when I was in um, college, I was doing A-levels on drama and theatre studies, performing arts, PE and business. And so when I ended up going to prison, I just said, you know what? I'm going to do something out of it. Instead of just staying here and just writing away. So yeah, that was my motivation. You just said you done that. Like- Performing drama. Arts, drama. Yeah. yeah. Touching now, that a little bit. Yeah, no, I was always into That's drama. Wicked. I done um GCSE uh, drama. I think I got an A or B, I can't remember right now. But yeah, so even I played um Othello and Shakespeare's Globe Theatre as part of a school production. That's dope. And yeah, that's uh, rest in peace, my friend uh, Javari Crichton, he played Iago. And funnily enough, he's um was also kind of involved in the things that I started doing and he ended up getting killed because of some of these robberies. But, um, Sorry to I, hear, man. Nah, yeah. But yeah, it's been, what, 15 years now? Oh. And it's crazy. But yeah, so we had a programme where they put me and him on the front of the programme, the whole school's productions. And I gave it to his mum as kind of a, a oh, lasting memory. But yeah, drama's nice. always been something that has been there in the background. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so what, we might see Bobby on mm. our screens. Uh, you soon. never know. You never know. You Love never that. know. Yeah, that would be dope, though. I think you've got it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, well done. And well done for, um, you know, staying motivated yeah. and staying on track. And the inspiration for the books? Um, one of my friends that I was with at the time was writing a book and he shared it with me. And I was quite inspired by him writing that. So I thought, oh, I could do the same. And um, I was thinking, okay, what story should I tell? And I thought be- better to tell the story of the case that I was kind of involved in. It was um, to do with a murder of a young boy in, in Peckham, which had nothing to do with me, but um, because of circumstances of who I w- was with and who I used to hang around with, um, I was implicated at the time. And um, yes, yeah, so I started giving out snippets of people so nearly everyone was reading it like I'll give it to the night officer who'll come to go and he said he'll come in the night time oh you've got ne- ne- another chapter wow. I'll give That's it to the, the medical staff the governors the inmates the pre- everyone that I could give it to and I think that's what kind of stems what I do now. How I've managed to grow all my brands right now, and mm-hmm. get, I'm just good at talking about what I'm doing and giving it out to people so they can see. So, yeah, that was the. the There's another prisoner who's who was writing a book that kind of inspired me to write, and then it just went on from there. That's dope. Yeah, that's wicked. Well done. And really, really it's good. not just one; it's two, right? Yeah, two. So, um, because it was people wanted so much of it, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna leave it at a cliffhanger, and to see how much people actually did want it, and then um, yeah, everyone like. Bro, you can't end a book like that. You need to do a part two. So even yeah. now, like, it's something that I want to actually eventually maybe make, make into a series. Cause we, we oh, kind of yeah. we kind of started doing it already, and but it was very low budget. I had no budget at the time, but now we got to yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's called the life I live, yeah, yeah. and we've done like two episodes, but I didn't like it, so I kind of uh, canned it. But it's something that I think that we can definitely uh, bring back. Something to chat to Netflix about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you also got a degree yeah. in prison. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, what was that, that in? Then that in criminology and social policy. And the reason why I wanted to do it in that because I wanted to better understand myself. And again, crime is my own fault. I, I take the blame. But um what that course taught me about things that kind of affect you in terms of parents' household income, inequalities, lack of opportunities, yeah. peer pressure, where you're brought up. And just how these things affect you, but ultimately it is your own decision because there's many people who came from that life, lived in that lifestyle as with me and didn't decide to go the criminal route. So it, again, fair. it's ultimately your own decision. But at the same time, it's fair because it, 
also shows about sometimes you can have the odds stacked against you yeah. right? or you can have things that don't go in your favour. Yeah. So it's getting that whole view. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, wow. You've done, you've gained a lot inside prison. You've done a lot. Yeah. Um, and they're like, that was motivation that you had to have. But there must have been challenges. Were there challenges? Oh, there's plenty of challenges. Um, Go on. What, what, what did you find hard and what was... The, 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 the hardest one was also... I had, my daughter was born while I was in prison. Oh, wow. So having built that relationship with mm. her as well while I'm in prison, not knowing exactly who I am, like why we're visiting this guy kind of thing from a young age. So um, we've got a beautiful relationship now, but just that that was the most difficult part. And me, I wasn't one that really cared about visits, but when I got shipped out to far prisons, like, oh, can't even see um, any of my um, what you call it family so on so that was that was the most difficult part but I think prison helped me in the long in the long run because I think I was kind of like not sure about what my purpose was in life at the time even now you're still trying to kind of find your purpose but now had I made it as a professional footballer would have been maybe these one of the rich footballers who've done these maybe give money to charity every now and then but now I think we impact people more mm-hmm. than um, what I would have done had I made it into football so um, prison had its, had its challenges of course just being locked away from your family, um, not being able to do what you want, the food and so on. But it definitely helped me. I'll definitely say that. Yeah. I mean, I can relate to, you know, prison helping. Um, but that's a massive thing. I'm glad you've got a good relationship with your daughter now. Yeah, man, I, see, uh, I see you guys on hard. social. Yeah, yeah, hard, yeah. yeah. you got hard. two daughters. Right? i got two. The other one oh. turns four this month. So we're taking her to uh, Disneyland. Uh, oh, that's nice. for, um, and that's another thing, I guess, hard about prison um, holidays. And you're not, not there. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. you're not being able to even just fly out. That's why since I've come out of prison, I've made it a thing to try to go away at least twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been doing that. Obviously, COVID kind of um, stopped that a bit. But for me, it's like... Prison taught me life is about experiences. It's Make about experiences. Memories. The world is yeah. so big. It's yeah. so massive. You go out and see different cultures, different places, different people. And we're like, a lot of people, these young people are just stuck in their blocks. And some of them will yeah. never make it out of the block. God forbid they'll be killed. They'll go to spend the, life, the rest of life in jail. They didn't experience life. Yeah. I put up a, a photo the other day of um, the OFB artists, not to get into names, but there's two of them. Um, we've got pictures with their kids. And the other one is um, doing life in prison. It just shows that he's not going to get that opportunity. So, yeah, life's all about experiences, man. Nah, for real. And I, and you touched on earlier where you said about, you know, you're making more of an impact to people, yeah? Mm. And I've noticed you do a lot of, like, things for young people. So what, what, why did you have the, like, when did you get that realisation you wanted to help young people? And why, why do you still do it now? Like I said, right? I don't really ever feel I should have been a gang member. And I think, when I think about it, most young people don't really want to do it. There's those, there's one, two kids who just want to be bad. But a lot of them just do it because they think it's a cool thing to do. I've always had a good heart. I like to say myself, obviously other people Likewise. will judge it. I like to say I've got a good heart so I can always kind of empathise with people. So me going to prison, I was like, what? How the hell did I end up here? I had so much hope and promise for myself. What am I doing here? So then I look at young people and then again, I saw so many talented footballers in prison and that hence why Hackney Football Club started because okay. I was like, Bro, wow, you're cold. But they didn't know there's anything as semi-pro. So I like, you know what? I have to create something for these young people. They don't have to go back in here because there's so many talented young people out there. There's one guy who I'm trying to help, but sometimes, as they say, you can take a donkey to the water. You can't force a donkey to drink. True. And he's still involved in kind of that lifestyle. I'm trying to extract him from it. But And that's that's cool. That, that's a good thing, yeah. man. And I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, Jesus. I'm not Santa Claus, but when I can help, I do help. And like I, I said, like that. I have my times where... I'm not the best person in the world either, so I don't go on as if I'm an angel, but mm. I know I've got a good heart at, at, at heart. So it's like, if I can help young people, then I can. Like, I got I received two beautiful messages yesterday, in fact. One from a young um, rapper that I'm ch- trying to help. And he just sent me a message like, you know what? You don't even realise it, but you're helping me change my life. Wow. And then another lady for the podcast that I do, and I just feel like, yeah, I'm giving the women a, a chance to do their own podcast. And she's like, oh, you don't really understand that. This is giving me, my life has been sort of rubbish of late. Just doing this is wow. really like giving me like a purpose. I enjoy coming here every Sunday. So those little messages that you get encourage you to do more. So, yeah. no, I love that. And this is exactly the stuff that, you know, we love yeah. to hear and we 100%. love, you know, sharing. So thank you very much. And, you know, it's people like yourself. You've been inside, so you've seen those people. It's not. You know, you, you've seen it, not many people can. So yeah. it's even more like, you know, 
it's, it's um, more powerful, man. Yeah, and I mean, there's people, there's people in prison who just made one mistake. Mm. They made one but mistake. But not many people can see it. Yeah. So, you know, the fact that you have and then can do or, or, or doing something, yeah. No, yeah. Le- no matter how big or small, yeah. you know, they're being noticed and that's being noticed and that's massive. Yeah, because that, the point I mean kind of thing that there'll be a kid, for example, in jail for murder, right? And of course, that's the the worst crime as per seen um, committed murder, right? And literally, they, they, they didn't get into any badness ever in their life before. Their friend has been killed. The emotion and rage that comes with that, the pride and ego that comes with it, has made them go and react to get revenge. And now they're sitting down doing life and murder, and people are convi- people are looking at, them, oh, you're a horrible person. But what led him to do that, and not mm. to justify, you can't yes, justify yes. It at all. Mm. But what led them to do that is that he's a good kid. So sometimes that's why I don't like to write off uh, people. And I think I think when I went on that show the other day, my mum said, "He said, oh, we should get them all harsh sentences." I'm like, no, because that there's people who will use that time to change themselves and make better of themselves. So I don't think we should ever write everyone, write anyone off completely. And I'm glad you touched on that. So I just because just on what you said, you might, do do you find it difficult that or do you ever come against people that are like have that sort of thinking that like, you why are you doing what you do? Why should you have a platform? Yeah. Do you come up against that sometimes? I, I, I come up against that all the time. And um, and sometimes there's, there's elements of it that I agree with because there are many football coaches out there who have lived a legitimate life, who have never got themselves in trouble and they're trying to make ends meet, they're trying to create their own clubs and they don't get half the attention I get or the funding or sponsorship I get. And I guess because my story is kind of sexy, oh, guys come out of prison and start their own football club. What about this guy who's never got involved in trouble at all, why is he he's not going to help? So I kind of understand that, but I always tell people, just learn to kind of market yourself and use things at your best of ability kind of thing. So I get that point sometimes, but in the day, I'm still doing the work. Yeah. So you can criticise me saying that you used to do this and you used to do that. Why are you getting this? But in the day, let's look at the work that's actually being done. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Focus on the hard work. Yeah. Mm. So what else? So just going back to like, obviously the fact that this is helping young people, um, uh, and certain young people kind of stay on track or stay out of trouble. What what else do you think can help young people maybe stay out of prison or just stay out of trouble? And It's very cliche, but keep them busy, man. Keep them busy in opportunities. Like we do um, something called the 32 Bar Cup every year where we have over 600 kids come and play a football tournament. So we've got a, and it serves so many different purposes. We've got a team that represents every borough in London. Yeah, The World Cup has 32 teams. London has 32 boroughs, so it's ideal to do a World Cup of boroughs. Now, a lot of these boroughs beef each other, right? Mm. So I thought, these kids just don't know each other. I love this if idea. You can, if you guys can come together, so you're from Lewisham, you're meeting people from Southwark, and you realise, oh, yeah, right. we're, we're, yeah, you guys are all right. So, and what purpose it serves, like, okay, say you go back to your ends later on and something happens, something, the fight's about to break out. You go, actually, no. I saw mum in the 32 bar cups the footballer right. leave you guys leave him. Right? My mate does that for new. Yeah, so I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so that that's that said one of the purposes, but also opportunities for the youth because they all like to play football. So it brings them together. Mm. Lots of scouts come on a day as well. Mm. And then the third purpose is that provide opportunities. These young people want jobs, they want employment, they want education. You get them, a lot of them don't know, they just think, oh, I want to be a footballer or a rapper or they what don't you know call what's it. Out there. There's so many things out there. Yeah. So um, this year was the biggest one that we've done. Uh, we had uh, Barclays Bank, we had Selfridges, we had Netflix. Um, yeah, um, we had um, Top Boy. Yeah, yeah, we had Sports Interactive. They all came down on a Saturday and done a workshop for these young people wow. and giving them opportunities oh, wow. into employment, education. And then on the Sunday was actually tournament itself. So, okay. so things like that is just to kind of answer your question that like just give them mm. things and opportunities and that, that they like doing. So if you tell us, hey, someone, a lot of these guys want to be rappers, right? Mm. Or, or musicians or whatever it is. So if you say, oh guys, we're going to have a music conference and we might have Heady One show up. They're all going to want to come down and meet Heady One. But while they're there, use it as opportunity to get them into courses and say, well, guys, this These is how you can become an engineer. This is how you can become a producer. And they'll, they'll start liking that. So it's about just providing them with the opportunities that they, that they want. I absolutely love this yeah, so man, much. Yeah, man, that's great because like me and like some people that I work with, when we're trying to like grab the interest of young people, you have to grab them with something they'd like to do. Yeah. Mm. And then when they're there, 
show them the but other also, opportunities that are about. Yeah, you know? that's what I mean. A lot, a lot of people don't have a clue what is even out there. Yeah. So just even presenting that and showing them what it might look like yeah. or, you know, getting them thinking about that. It's like, oh, wow. Because okay. you have to meet the young people where they're at. Because some people, I, I get um, some stick sometimes because I run f- about five blog pages, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all doing very well. And some people are like, oh, but Bobby, you, you, just, you just posted a drill song. One minute you're posting drill songs, next minute you're saying save the use. I've said you have to get the kids where they're at. If I just post preachy, 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 they're not coming on my page. Mm. They're going to come on page and see a song from one of their drill rappers. They'll scroll. The next post, they'll see, oh, here's an opportunity. So there's a method to my madness. I have to, I can't just come there and preach. I have to get their attention somehow. So I posted the other day, I said that a lot of times you guys will come on my page and see nonsense. But there's method to my nonsense because behind that, I'll show what we're doing at Hackney Football Club. I'll show the opportunities that are there with Big Eagle. I'll show opportunities that other organisations are given to us. So it's about trying to meet them where they're at. Because if you just become too preachy, they turn off. I like that. I, I'm, I think because I struggle with that balance because I'm like you. Mm. Like in the terms of I'm a bit preachy, preachy sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's great preaching. No, it's it right, It's right. But like, I feel like that um, difference having the balance mm. makes it even better. You re- do, you re- do you feel like you reach more people that way? 100%. And the thing is, I got all these young people, all these young, like literally, I went carnival mm. and I got stopped by at least 300 people. Wow. Like literally young people. And uh, and some of, them are, some of them are older people as well. And they're like, yo, we respect what you do, man. We love it. Like, you don't understand. You're the voice of the streets. Like everyone, like, rocks with you you need to understand that I'm not, and I'm like I don't know how many I, I, need, I need to go and check if my chest okay I don't know how many times I have to do this people thank you thank you thank you but literally that, that's what it was so for me it's like it's doing something right because the people I'm trying to target and reach they're obviously listening they're obviously watching and you know you, you mentioned that you know you show what you're doing at Hackney Wick FC and you display that and you show opportunities why is Hackney Wick FC different to other football clubs um, because we just we do more than football. Like the way I've done it, I've partnered up with brands and so on. So, like for example, um, Nike paid twelve of our young people two hundred pound each to come and do a shoot. No other club is doing that. Our women's team the other day got paid by another sports company to come and do. So we're always bringing them opportunities and look makes them see this is what happens outside of just football. There's photography. There's filming. There's editing. There's um merchandise there's so many different things you can do besides football so we try to give them opportunities away from just playing football okay we take them on trips we, we take them into prisons i took six of our young people into felton really? the other day That's yeah we, we went to felton last week thursday and to be fair the prisons beat us to be fair but <laughs> there's some good players in there <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but that served purpose as yeah. well it served the purpose that these young people say look you don't want to come in here because mm. these people you're talking to they want to leave mm. and then show the people that are in there like look when you come out, I was in here do. with you as well. Yeah. You can also come out as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what makes it different. Stuff, man. Yeah. So this might, I don't want it to be come, come across as a harsh question. Yeah. It's not. But obviously when you were younger and the football team didn't, didn't end up keeping you yeah. out of gangs and out of prison, what do you think is different about what you're doing now with Hackney Wick, how it can stop? It, because it's also the opportunity that comes with it. Okay, so, so you, you didn't have football, that then. You didn't have, so right. we, we, again, I partnered up with Loughborough University, for example, right? Mm. Loughborough is the world's leading uh, university in sports. We took a camp, uh, 16 of our young players there over the summer and stayed over the weekend, played a foot match against their team and they enjoy being in an elite professional sports environment. So those things there... It's like you want to, so if you're not behaving, you're not part of the team. So yeah. you want to behave, you want to make sure you're part of the team. So those sort of things there can actually address people's behaviours. And then also we live in a more social media world, right, where content is key. So these young people now are seeing, oh, oh, we've had a football club, they've got to do this, they've got to do this, they've got to do that. Whereas other clubs, you just play football and maybe mm-hmm. that's it. There's no extracurricular activities okay. beside the football. No, that's a very good point. No, that's dope. Yeah, so you're yeah, doing yeah. other activities building on the football as yeah. well. So then... Like you said, so you're showing them there's editing, there's modelling, yeah. there's French, even there's coaching. Branding. Some now, some of our, our coaches for our younger team are some of the first team players, and wow. some. And I, I see the transition that someone was with us from when they, I started the club seven years ago, and the other day I was at training, I see one kid is like, "Yo, Bobby," I look at that. Oh, but this kid, he was there when I started the football club. Wow. He was ten years old, right? And he's, he's progressed. He's about to go to uni. Wow. So like, oh, you've gone actually through the system and I've seen you growing up. Mm. And even the players who started the club with me, we're all in a group chat. They're all sort of men now. They've got their children. They've got their partners and so on. So just seeing that whole transition yeah. and keeping it. And don't get me wrong. 
we're not the 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 we're not the saviors of the world. There's some who falling down the way, way wayside. There's some who we got one of our players who's actually getting his decat just now. Okay, right. The second game we ever played for Hackney Football Club, he got arrested on suspicion of murder and then got done for uh, manslaughter. Mm. And that's the second game we ever played. He wasn't there and he had our number nine kit. But he's just now got his DK, I just done a reference for him, for, for him to um, go to university because he wants to go to university. So there's some who fall down the wayside, but we don't forget about them. We've been in contact ever since to the point that where he's served, he's been inside for seven years now. So now he's about to start getting released now. We're still in contact. We're still trying to help him, him as well. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear that, man. And, and I, I remember, I don't know, you might have to refresh my memory because I just remember seeing something about you work with ex-professional footballers who get released. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of young footballers who their whole dream, when they get, these clubs get them from age seven, eight, nine. So can you imagine from seven, eight, nine, you're wearing the Crystal Palace, the Arsenal tracks, you're the man in the hood. Like everyone looks at you, oh, that's the footballer. And then all of a sudden at 18, you've been released. That must be depressing. That might be that because your your family's kind of relying on you. Your family's like, yeah, you're the next big thing that's gonna kind of make it, right? And then it doesn't happen, so they're demoralized. Their morale's gone. They literally depressed. So we try to get them back and look. You're good enough. Here's a platform. Hey, you can see. Go and showcase yourself. And I'm proud that five of our players from last season because we're playing step six of British football. Okay, that's like the tenth division yeah, yeah. of British football. Yeah, yeah. So we managed to get. Four, four of our players from last season have now gone into um, step uh, three and step four. So playing the wow. sixth division and fifth division and some of them are getting paid now as well. So I always tell people it's a platform for them to come to. And like I said, unfortunately, we got rid of our first team manager last week because results weren't great. Happened. So we got a match tonight. So hopefully we can get three points. But yeah. Yeah, I hope so. That's wicked. So like you do the Hackney Week FC, you also do Big Ego Media. Tell us more about Big Ego Media, how that started, how um, that came about. Big Ego Media is something I actually created when I was at HMP Ford. I was just about to get released and I remember I was in the education department and um, I was like, I'm going to create a platform that gives young people opportunities. I, don't, I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but through mm. media, writing books, because when I was writing a book, I'm like, oh, maybe I can create a platform where people can come and, what you call it, produce their own books and so on. So I kind of put in a back burner. I released the, the two books. They're done decent. Came out of prison. And then I kind of put it on a back burner. It was all about the football club and creating that and building that up. And then people just hit me up every now and then because through... Um, Amazon, I always get emails or oh, royalty uh, okay. payment of eight people bought your book this month too. I'm like, are people still buying this book? And then I always get the uh, message like, oh, and people met me in prison who read the book. Like, yo, what happened to that book, man? When are you going to release it? You should have made it into, I said, it's been released. Oh, you should make that into a film. Everyone just told me because of how descriptive it was. I'm like, you know what? Let me try a thing. So I started kind of pitching it to different people. Then I got a bit of a small budget. And I've got a group of young people that I work with, some from a football team, some who just apply from local schools. And we kind of put together a two-part episode. It meant to be like six parts for the first series, but we end up doing the two. But I remember I wanted to showcase how Peckham was before before releasing it. I wanted to build up the excitement. And then that's what This Is A Story Of became. Wow. So I first had done This Is A Story Of my friend who had passed. Then I done This Is A Story Of a few other people from Peckham who had been killed. So I want people to understand how you wanted mad, to paint the picture. Yeah, basically. how yeah. crazy Peckham was between yeah. two thousand and five to two thousand and ten. It was nuts. So before the the, the series release, you kind of understand what you're going to be getting into, and then that just took off on 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 Instagram. And everyone's like, "Yo, do Then it was like, "Oh, do a story of this guy in Brixton. Do a story of this guy in Birmingham." <laughs> and I just started doing, it and then it was a whole thing. I'm glad you touched on 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 that. Why you started like how you got into Peck because I feel like that's your flagship video. I don't know, for me. Yeah, it's got, it's got, that's the most watched video. It's got nearly half a million views and that's what people kind of first saw. So, um, and then after that, it was the one I told a story of my fight in ISIS. Yeah. When I talk about um, when it gets peak in jail. Yes. So those are the two that read and then before that, it was like, tell us more stories and then, then it just, and I remember I had that maybe 500 sus subscribers and then the next day 2,000 then 3,000 5,000 subscribers 8,000 subscribers I'm like whoa people really want these stories and then that's how just big ego grew and I always tell people don't be afraid to to start off without looking so professional because mm -hmm. even now I'm still trying to get to the point that we look professional before I just wake up sleep in my eye like yo guys <laughs> what's going on Um, let me tell you this story kind of thing and people didn't care about how low budget it was they just cared about the stories yeah. and then over time um, I remember there was a, um, 
guy from Peckham who was kind of seen as the Peckham boss at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, he was someone I kind of looked up to growing up. And I remember I used to hound him like, yo, come and, come and tell your story kind of thing. Let me do this story of you. And he's like, oh no. Then one day I said, oh, why don't we do an Instagram live together? Go. Then the Instagram live, it had like 3,000 people watching. Yeah, I've seen your lives. Yeah, yeah, you've done a few people. And then after that was like, I put it on uh, YouTube. It had 30,000 views in one day. So I was like, oh, okay. Maybe people want me to start interviewing people as well. And I just start interviewing people. And okay. then it just sort of birthed everything that's happening now. Yeah, that's so cool. Well done. Yeah. Well done for that. Yeah, appreciate well, you it. mentioned <laughs> ISIS as well. We were in ISIS around the same time. Mm. But I think it was on different wings. Yeah, so I would have been on Meridian. So yeah, I was when, on when they, when they, um, I mean, ISIS was a violent place. I can't lie. ISIS was a bit nuts. It was violent. <laughs> it was so I mean, I was It was Alarm Bell City. That's what yeah, I used to yeah, call it. Yeah. I mean, I got this souvenir here from Ooh. ISIS as well. And that's the when I do From that story, story of yeah. the story that I do yeah. uh, when it gets peak in jail. Yeah. But um, ISIS, it had its good parts, had its bad parts, and I think they they find it they found it at the time because it's so new, difficult to yeah. control all the young. It was people. like an open regime at yeah. first, didn't it? And, and now, because I think now they got they've been open now for 10, 10 11 years, years, yeah, years they probably would have got things sorted out by now and have the right place. And funnily enough. I'm hopefully going to be starting to work with them um, at HGP ISIS That's very dope. soon to do some um, contracts over there. Do you remember your male ever getting mixed up with someone's in ISIS? Do you remember that? a couple of times. One thing you always looked up, looked up for, to, was, look for was your male. So yeah. when you didn't, someone said, I sent you your male. And you're like, well, I, didn't, I didn't get my male. So, my mate had a similar last name to yeah. you. It was just a letter different. And yeah. sometimes oh. he used to get your post. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, we but didn't get like, any, any of my photos. Nah, that, nah. <laughs> yeah. We would have sent that back. We're, yeah. we're not, that, we're not yeah. that bad. But yeah, that used to happen. So I just wanted to see if that brought your memory back to Aww. things. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, but you're right. Mel is the um, one thing that gets you super happy. 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> um, okay, so what is next for Bobby Kasanga? Um, there's so much things. Um, there's um Lazarus. You guys you know Lazarus was from, right. That's the Bible story, right? Yeah. yeah so about the, the Lazarus who rose from the dead, right? From cool. the dead, right? So you you can see my hair's looking a bit crazy right now, but I'm letting it grow. Okay. Come, okay. Last year everyone's laughing at me, Bobby. You're, you're going bored. You're losing your hair and so on. So I found a treatment that works. Okay. I brought my hair back, and I've had like literally over 300, 400 men in my DMs basically saying, "Yo, Wait, what is this? What do you use for your hair? Okay. What's kind of for your oh, hair? Oh my hair, bro. What's yeah. this? <laughs> so it's coming. So. Oh, this okay. is your own thing. Yeah? This is what's coming. I'm doing my own. So basically, I was I was using a different company, right? Okay. So I reached out to them and said, "Look, I got this amount of people in my DMs asking me about what I'm using, right? I got a huge following. Why don't we work together? Yeah. And they're just longing it off. I said, you know what? Actually, I'll do my own thing. I'll do my own thing, right? So hit up a few uh, pharmaceutical companies. We worked out the formula. Worked out what we're supposed to do. This is got cool. everything in place. And in the next couple of months. Lazarus is going to okay. resurrect people. So that's that's one of the things we're working on. Obviously, we've got the football club, we've got production things. Um, with Big Eagle Women, for example, my audience at the beginning, as you can imagine, because there's a lot of sort of gangs and stuff, was 97% men, 3% women. Now that I've started putting more female content on mm. there, my audience is now 11% women. Okay. But you still get the males complain. If you look at the comments, oh, I'll take these women off. Why are these women on here and so on? But I'm still forcing <laughs> through saw, that agenda. I, I saw one of those podcasts and you had someone who worked in prison. Oh yeah, oh, that, that was a, that was a podcast. That was a, that was a, uh, that was an interview. So yeah, she was a prison. Okay, yeah, she, so I'm getting confused. Yeah, 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 she, yeah she was yeah. a prison officer yeah, yeah, who yeah, cool. um, ended up getting a relationship yeah. with a, a prisoner in HMP. Wandsworth and funnily enough if you ever watch one of my prison stories where I talk about an auntie from another jail yeah yeah this guy is prolific wow he's prolific because he ended up okay <laughs> yeah alright that's it, another one that's for another that's day another yeah, one. Okay. Prolific, yeah, yeah keep pushing that's for the women awesome. yeah you're, you're do it for ego, the women you got big ego women yeah that's growing that's growing. Um, obviously, there's Bob's Tabar, which I need to resurrect because that was saving everyone through COVID. So um, anyone who doesn't know what Tabar is, it's basically barbecue goat. It's a Congolese delicacy, but literally, and what helped was like all the rappers were buying it. So when all the rappers were buying it, it made other people say, I want to try it as yeah, well. And then yeah, it just yeah. sort of grew. Um, yeah, just trying, trying to just create more content and go on more holidays, have more experience and try to help as many young people as we can really, to be okay. fair, yeah. And just to, just to like, thank you for sharing that. Look forward to seeing those no, things as well. I was going to say, you've got lots going yeah. on. I'm Always. excited. Thank you. Wanted to end on this, because this is something where, uh, like I'm trying to ask everyone, because yeah. I really like the answer to this, because everyone's yeah. got a different view. What, what advice would you give to someone who's 
just got out of prison and is starting their journey, their life after prison journey, what advice would you give to them? I would say be humble and patient um, because if you start looking at everyone else, you're going to go straight back in. I came out and got a job at a bagel factory doing nights, making bagels. Everyone knew me for making what happened money before. I could have just come back out and said, yo, give me give me some drugs, let me go and sell. Because I had the people, the connection for that. But I said, I don't, do, I don't, I don't want to get involved in it. I, don't, I just spent eight years in jail. So for me, it was really, I had to humble myself and be patient and just wait. We didn't, we, 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 we started handling football from 2015. We weren't financially stable really until 2019. So four, process, year, four yeah. years of that was a struggle and hustling and leg- legitimate hustle, right? But making sure that you're just taking your time, right? Speak to your family. Laying the and, foundations. And, and speak, speak honestly. Um, if you've not got the money at the time, because a lot, of, especially those with uh, young kids, right? Where the mother or your child might be putting pressure on you. Like, look, we need money. We need you. What's going on? And it might make you feel a way as a man because you're not being able to provide. Just speak honestly and say, you know what? I've not got it at the moment, but just rest assured I'm going to be trying and go and try. If you have to go and get a nine to five, if you're going to work in a warehouse, just do those things for the time being while working on your crafts in the background. Yeah. There's a guy that's, uh, there's a guy that's currently on, what's that channel four show that's just coming out now? Um, Married at First Sight. Yeah. There's the, um, <laughs> obviously we can't say names, but there's, there's, there's a black guy on that show, right? When I got out of jail, he, helped me that guy right and where he helped me with the job center and um, told me oh go and speak to this guy because part of the job center that he'll get you a job and so on and he said yeah i got you a job he told me oh, you can work at a perfume shop in westfield i said Perf- in westfield me <laughs> yeah <laughs> now don't get me wrong I'm, I'm telling people just humble your pride and go but i was like no nah, not that one and i told him look i'm trying to do this football club and do, and, he, and he told me this saying that I always tell people all the time right he said there was two hunters, right? They were both had to go and get food for their for their family, right? One of the hunters went to get food the night before. So when they both went hunting the next day, the other hunter who had food at home already said, Oh, I'm, I'm going home, I'm tired, because we had food. The hunter who had nothing at home at all, he had to stay out there and grind and get that food. So basically the more of him is that look, if you're really trying to do this football club thing, right? Maybe this perfume shop I'm trying to say isn't good for you, right? So go for it as hard as you can and try to make money from it as hard as you can because if you put your all in it, you'll get it. So don't worry about the jobs and I'll, I'll let them know that oh, I decided this ain't for you. So, I yeah. actually love that. Yeah. Yeah. Dope, but also you thought about what you what you do want. So, yeah. you know, what you've said there is amazing, humble, patience and thinking about what you, you thought about what you wanted and yeah. you went for it. So well done. No, thank really you. good. Um, it. Were there any organisations or any support out there that really helped you when you were released from prison? Yeah, um, there's quite a few, obviously. Um, believe it or not, probation was a massive help, although my probation officer at the time was kind of a witch towards me, but I always tell him <laughs> now that I thank you for being that witch because okay. it kept me on a straight like and narrow. What a word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the council, Hackney Council helped massively because I got my flat within two months after coming out of prison, which yeah. was crazy for me. And I think that gave me the stability that I needed. Got a lot of people coming out of prison, difficulty is that you ain't got nowhere to stay. Mm. You're staying on sofas and you're staying in bail hostels and so on. So me having that flat helped me massively. And then an organization called St. Mongols, which were excellent in sort of helping me find structure in my life as well, because they helped me in regards to helping other people become a peer support worker for them as well. So yeah. That's wicked, thanks. Thank cool. you for sharing all that. Please let us know where we can find you, your socials, all mm, of that stuff. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, you can find me on Instagram on Bobby Kasanga20, uh, and there's Big Ego Media and Hackney Wick FC. Um, on TikTok, uh, Bobby Kasanga, Twitter, Robert Kasanga, I think it is. And then on YouTube is Big Ego Media. Cool, Wicked. Man. We'll put them in the description yes. as well. We will. Like, uh, thank you for sharing yeah. what you shared, like, and thank speaking you for openly on. and honestly. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, man. Um, so we have loads of guests on the sit down sharing their uh, journey of life after prison. So please check them out. We also have another podcast called Getting Out, where we give information, advice and guidance. Please have a look for those as well. We would also love to hear from you and how your life after prison journey is going. So you can DM us on Instagram and Twitter at After Prison Pod or email us to podcast at prison.radio or you can even write to us at 
Life After Prison, National Prison Radio, HMP Brixton, London, SW25XF. Yes. So thank you all for listening. Once again, thank you, Bobby, for being here. Um, if you liked what you heard and what you've seen, please share this video, subscribe and hit that like button. It really helps us get it out there for everyone involved. Um, yes, yeah, please do. We'll see you next time. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Take care.